Expression here now, and, uh, <laughs> Mr. Don, complete this phrase, please. I am like Perry Como. <laughs> I am like Perry Como. <clears throat> That's a good theory. <laughs> Walking down the 
the street they'd say mm -hmm. Then you remember that there's 
aspect of the birds flying overhead, looking down, the sea being a big green lens, they look through the sea, the big green lens, see me, see, big pink ball, there's certain What that bird feel? That bird felt sorry for me. <laughs> Birds not having a language of pain like us humans didn't exactly know it was wrong. Kind of makes you proud to be a human having a language of pain. <laughs> anyway, the bird flew off and forgot all about me, and there I was. And the, the waves came by and they washed me up on the beach, and there I was, beach like a big old bloody old whale, and the sun would beat down. <laughs> Bleach my bones, why is a bone? Bleach my bones, why is a bone? Bones, why is a bone? Bone, why is a bone? Bones, why is a bone? And that was, that was sort of the end of the song. Uh, you remember that song? It, it, it was pretty good. It, it had a lot of stuff in it that you could think might mean other stuff. <laughs> people, people like that in the song, thinking, I think that song's got stuff that means other stuff in it. <laughs> That's one of the tricks you learn, you know, over the years. Well, so we're back to this song. It's a song about another song. This is kind of a long introduction, I know. <laughs> the problem is, you know, look, I could tart the whole thing up by singing it in French, you know. Etc. Et but um, that would disguise the fact that in the end, this is a song about a, another song. I think we're going to play it now. <laughs> now that I've bummed you all out. <laughs> I care, I do, but I'm not going to lie to you. Okay. Let me see here. This, uh, Let's go, this goes, let's go. Okay. Now, of course, this microphone is going to flop down through the, in the middle of the most dramatic part of this song, but I'm ready for it. <laughs> Anyone I know that I 
I think, yeah, yeah, I think, I think I'm going to use this now. <laughs> the aspect that I'd like to discuss with you is, um, first of all, what is this? Let's get this clearly identified. It's not a trick question, just what is it? An egg. It looks like an egg. <laughs> this is not just any ordinary egg. <laughs> no. This is Christopher Columbus egg. This egg thinks he's Christopher Columbus. It's a sad story. Let's have that sad sack. So I think we want to have a sad sack. <laughs> Very much like a sad sack. Hey, wait, where are you going? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this egg thinks he's Christopher Columbus. Now, Christopher Columbus egg set off the discover the edge of the table back. <laughs> there he was, wobbling across the table. <laughs> the table is round. <laughs> Salt and pepper shakers are saying, Christopher, the table's flat. <laughs>
Oh dear, everything's going wrong. <laughs> Where's it at? You know, you stupid egg. Did you see it? Did you see the egg? This is so embarrassing. I don't know. <laughs> so I can time this out properly. So, when we wrap this set up in a tremendous outpouring of brilliance, just remember that there's another set coming up after, how long, John, how long of a break would we leave Mr. Lee sell them flogged them cookies and milk that you got out there? 22 minutes. 22 minutes. <laughs> We're a little bit anal here. <laughs> 
And so, at this point, I decided that what, how we were going to organize the set was that we were going to do all of the, the hit type material in the first set. <laughs> develop a really good rapport. <laughs> then all that dangerous stuff we're going to do in the next set. So. Don't worry about it, okay? Now, I think, I think that this is the time that we're going to now do, personally and frankly, my favorite song. This is a song that I've done every show I've ever done. This is the point that my wife walks out of the room, shaking her head. Later at night, when I've returned from my fabulously successful performance, and I'm laying in bed hour after hour saying, that's pretty good, wasn't it? I was just really wonderful tonight, wasn't I? They were really, they really liked me, you know? And, and she says, yes, David. <laughs> and, you know, when I did that song for the 845th time, you know, they really liked it. They didn't care that they'd heard it 845 times, did they hear? And she said, no. I, I have to admit, it's David Thomas, genius or phony. <laughs> this song is a song about the dinosaurs. Now... <laughs> I knew you wanted to hear it. <laughs> the one thing I learned from my father, if something is funny once, it's funny eight, four hundred million times. <laughs> the old ones being the good ones. This song, this song starts out pretty simply. I was at the museum, the Natural History Museum. I, I was there standing before the, the bones of the haplocanthosaur, standing in the hall of the great dinosaurs, and there before me was the bones of the haplocanthosaur, which is a dinosaur, something looking like a brontosaurus for those unwashed of you who even compare such a thing to a brontosaurus. <laughs> there I was, my bones, my bones communing with its bones. And my bones and my flesh strangely were reaching out to its bones, leaving my flesh behind. It was a very strange sight. My bones were bonetically attracted to that. <laughs> At this point, a nuclear family pulled up beside me. <laughs> Mooder, fooder, sooner, and ruder. The kids were actually, naturally, interested in this large, awkward-looking beast before them. <laughs> Not me, the dinosaur. <laughs> they were asking embarrassing questions of their, of their parents, and their parents, you could feel their minds shifting back through their, the file of their memory of high school biology, what they knew of the dinosaur. <laughs> you could hear them say, Ah, uh, yeah, the dinosaur, uh, its stomach didn't really work right. It had to swallow rocks to make its stomach work. And its brain was about the size of a walnut. It was dumb. It was dumb. It didn't deserve to live. It did not deserve to live. on the sofa. I turned on the television to seek solace and oblivion. And I saw something that day on the television that changed my life. Now I'm going to tell you that you'll know what I saw. In the 22 minutes that we have between the sets, you'll come up to me with your cookies and milk and you say, <laughs> I'd like to thank you for opening my eyes 
And I'll say, it's all in a day's work. Because <laughs> what I saw there was a movie, One Million Years to See, BC, for Kill Well. <laughs> We have been fed a line of propaganda about the dinosaur. And I've had enough to hear. I am not going to listen again to the definition of its name. Because I, I see that we've been fed a, a series of stereotypes about the dinosaur. Two, two basic stereotypes, and it just doesn't make sense. I'm going to get straight. And you'll see what I saw, and you'll know what I know. You'll no longer be able to be quiet about it. <laughs> you have to tell your neighbors, you have to tell your friends, you have to be done with me, go on the stage and tell everybody. Because what I saw was this. That is some stereotype number one. Let's see if you recognize this. to ever walk the earth. That's what it says. I don't think so. <laughs> Dragon like teeth, it says here, with which to take huge chunks from its prey and crunch through bones and flesh to rip them apart. To rip them apart. And the tremendous capacity of his stomach <laughs> allowed him to devour enough food at one time, get this, to rest underneath a palm tree. <laughs> for a week or so between meals. This is what it says here. <laughs> this pamphlet, by the way, is put out by an outfit called Discovery World. Discovery World. What springs to mind? KGB? <laughs> CIA? Illuminati? Masons? Huh? 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 <laughs> Talk about subliminal messages. Talk about your subliminal messages here. Tremendous capacity of his stomach allowed him to devour enough food at one time to rest underneath a palm tree for a week or so between meals. You gotta look at this thing away and want you to see it. Tyrannosaurus Rex had a rough week in Manhattan. Had to get down to Miami Beach to relax. He's got his Bermuda shorts on. He's got his Hawaiian floral print shirt. He's got his knobbly knees sticking out behind. He's got his sunglasses. He's got them, them amber type sunglasses. I saw that. He's sitting under the palm trees. 
saying to himself, well, he had to slaughter a couple million bunny fuzzy proto mammalian bunny rabbits to get that <laughs> trail of blood and fur all the way from Manhattan. It was a rough week. He's laying under the palm tree. He's saying, I am, I am, look at the girls. <laughs> When his stomach was empty, he would rouse from his death-like sleep <laughs> to start the process over again. With a Jew. <laughs> his life was one of killing, <coughs> eating, sleep. <laughs> life of killing, eating, and sleeping. <laughs> Let me show you dinosaur stereotype number two. It all come clear. I call this the Uncle Tomosaur. Things. Teeth like a whale. That same 
same ancient flying animal called the Quetzalcoatlus discovered in Texas 1972 had wings 42 feet 42 feet covered in hair not plastic purple and green slime flesh <laughs> covered in hair teeth like a whale 42 feet wing to wing Bird, 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 bird,
discovered this creature and what he looked like. Well, that covers it. <laughs> okay, that sums it up. Okay, uh, here we go on another accordion tune. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't encourage me. <laughs> no, this is um, Busman. I mean, this is, um, this goes along with that song that we did in the first set, but, uh, my theory is spontaneous, similar to, but remember that at that point we said the heart was like a crazy bus driver, and, um, let's see, Mr. Sound, hey, Mr. Sound, man, do a thing for me, put a lot of reverb in. Drunk on this accordion, if you would please. Make it sound spacey and fabulous, and so nobody will know when I play wrong. <laughs> 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 Oh, stop, Rachel. 
sort of claims. Earning all them books, rocking on them heels, watching a while the heart of the flames. I'm keeping the 
check. Well, it's in the bank. They're not in the union. Anyway. This song called My Town. This is um, inspired and basically taken from an album by a fellow named Kim Nordeen, Word Jazz. And I'm going to forget it all, but that's okay. we got to go back to the 50s now, which is why we're setting this particular kind of mood. Word jazz, Ken Norton. Liberty Jim Man. We all know the story of the Emperor's New Clothes. 
It's that punk kid that yells out, The Emperor's got new clothes, no clothes. Gets off too lightly for my tastes. <laughs> I don't like that kid. I would rather have just gone off personal. What difference did it make? This is a story about my town. It's not what you want it to be, my town. One day I was walking, walking down Euclid, saw the name of the marquee, Liberty Chip Man, here tonight. I had to know, said to myself, I gotta know. I gotta know about this, Liberty Chip Man. I don't know. I... One day, one day, I said to myself, it just might be. Gotta know. Should know better by now, though. Should know better, but I gotta know. That's how I happen to be, sitting in the dark. Sitting in the dark, waiting there. Said to myself, this darkness, I recognize this up. I've been here before. Flipperty Jim Man stepped into the light. We waited. There's a sound like, uh, I don't know. There's a sound like wind. Sound like leaves brushing, brushing the summer air, he said. Sitting in the 
in the darkness. Him saying the flippity chip the bippity bow. It was like waves breaking at his feet. And there he was saying, yes, yes, yes. It's like down at the corner, stereo dogs. Gotta pick up the stereo dogs. So broken. 
go home when I call for the captain. Wanna go home? Let me go home. participation part of the show. <laughs> we like this part. Yes, yes. I don't want to put any pressure on you. Participate. I always needed that sort of thing. I just want to tell you a story about how it's likely to be later in my life. I don't know, 20 years from now, my career on a long downward slide into oblivion, hitting bottom. <laughs> there I am, the musician's, musician's retirement home. 
Sitting there next to Freddie Mercury, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the good old days. You know, and you gotta imagine this, Freddie Mercury just going on and on. <laughs> about how oh, he did these shows in Brazil before 40 million people and they were all singing along. We are the show. <laughs> Say, yes, Freddie, is that really so? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I wish somebody at one point in my entire pitiful career had sung along with me like they did with you. <laughs> Why, the twilight of my life would be much brighter now than it happened. I wonder what it's like people sing along with you. <laughs> this ever happened with you know guys? Um, really? I don't wait. <laughs> now your career is almost as pitiful as mine. <laughs> and you mean to tell me they well which one? Which song? Yeah. Can you talk and play guitar at the same time? <laughs> Today. I don't want to put any pressure on you, as I said. I, you know, I, I don't believe in manipulation as a technique. Expression of professional. <laughs> we come as the John B. Big Roundup now.
<laughs> you think we ought to use the um, big the drum or the big drum? <laughs> <laughs> we better just use this one. I don't know. We can't get that other one. Yeah. <laughs> Love and fun, not 
we've had a few laughs. <laughs> now it's time for toodle-doo. <laughs> oh, what water. Oh, the same. And in the ding the do Good night. Good night. Ah, 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 ah. What?